very good afternoon to all the participants of uh, today's uh, impact lecture series at the outset uh, i welcome all the participants on behalf of the mongopa polytechnic uh, college and uh, on behalf of the institutions innovation council i extend a heartfelt welcome to all the participants faculties and uh, students uh, from all over the country uh, we have uh, around 350 registrations um, i uh, hope everyone will join this meeting uh, for today's uh, session afternoon session first session we have dr banumathi ma'am uh, who is assistant controller of patents and designs from patent office chennai uh, ma'am completed his bsc chemistry from zoology major and msc biotechnology and completed her uh, phd in biotechnology uh, and he, madam did his post doctoral research also in the area of intellectual property and uh, madam has served as uh, examiner of patents and design and now he is the assistant controller of patents and design in the patent office so who is very suitable person uh, for this topic uh, madam uh, looking after the various activities involved uh, in connection with the uh, grants and uh, uh, rejection of uh, patent proposals and the pre grant and post grant hearing officer and the investigation of patent disputes and uh, many more such uh, related activities uh, regarding the patents and uh, i am uh, also trained in various patent related uh, uh, activities in uh, japan and uh, switzerland and also uh, in boys at switzerland he madam attended several uh, international trainings on patent related things and uh, several uh, Uh, trainings in the field of in the intellectual property rights and madam also received various uh, awards and fellowships uh, particularly related to the field of intellectual property rights uh, uh, madam is a very suitable and uh, very vast experience in this area so he is, and madam is very suitable for uh, delivering this uh, session uh, i extend our thoughts to welcome to madam on behalf of the mongopa polytechnic college and on my own behalf and on behalf of the Institution Innovation Council, Madam, readily accept our invitation to deliver a session uh, to the participants in the intellectual property rights topic. Uh, well, thank you, Madam, for accepting our invitation and for uh, uh, delivering this session. Welcome, you, Madam. Uh, you, you can carry on. It's now the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I understand there are students and faculty. And yes, Madam. and i think this is a introduction session basically you don't have much idea about intellectual property rights yes yes okay so let's start from the beginning and if you have any doubts you can just stop me then so we are going to talk about intellectual property rights a very basic idea i'm going to give you so intellectual property rights first of all what and why are we going about with intellectual property rights so intellectual property or intellect so when you have a problem when you come up you try to find a lot of solutions so the start for ip rights starts with a problem most of the times not always so when you have a problem you try so many um of what do you say options you get ideas now the idea is the mother it starts from there okay so first of all you got a problem and the pathway starts with having an idea now whether the idea is successful or not depends upon how you are prosecuting it and how the idea is so when you get an idea it is your intellect there may be problems numerous problems or the same problem with everybody but it depends upon whether you have an idea whether you are trying to make out you know the whether you are trying to implement or solve that idea so when you start with that idea okay that is called the intellect now if you will explore it okay then you come to intellectual property so when you create that solution okay so that is the intellectual property so we say necessity is the mother of invention so you have a problem and you try to find a solution now that solution came from your intellect your brain okay so when you try to protect that particular intellectual idea 
okay which is in the form of a physical entity so that becomes intellectual property so your intellect is protected so that becomes intellectual property but it has to be implemented so if you just have an idea it is not going to be protected it has to be performed so here there are several examples of in this is a very olden days case can you see the icon which i am moving hello can you hear me yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah so in this first picture which i have shown you this is about hair drying so there was a problem to dry the hair so the inventor has directed or designed an instrument which will help dry hair so this is an invention so he thought about it and he made it and it is working so now he tries to protect that idea now that idea if he just say that i can make it like that it can dry that will not help it has to come in a tangible form a tangible form means something which you can see okay so when you get it in that kind of a form you write it and you show that it works then it becomes a you can protect that kind of a thing but if you just have an idea it is in your mind and you are just explaining that is not protectable okay so it has to be developed so these are various examples of intellectual property which you created to solve a problem for example this um, sandals or this person who is driving he wants to have a free hand moment okay and he doesn't want rain to fall on him so this is basically in the uk so in that there is always rain he wants his hand to be free because he wants to smoke and he wants to you know keep something in his hand and it's always raining there so based upon the weather the conditions of the road he has made this one wheeled vehicle so these kind of things are small small inventions now it's the step to step protocol okay you actually keep inventing so when you keep inventing what happens you get better and better products see for example you have this car you have an old model you are trying to improve or improvise it and that's why you get better and better and better products okay so this is one another example of a patent here you have this famous michael jackson's um stage performance where people were so shocked to see his him bending down so it is basically because of this shoe now somebody designed such a shoe okay by means of which you can create an anti gravity illusion so these are all small things but which are very very valuable so let's see what is intellectual property intellectual property means a creation of intellect now this creation can be in the industrial level it can be in science it can be in literature it can be in the artistic fields once you make this property you have to protect it so where should you go to get it protected you go to the government now the government will give this right the owner of that property he give they give them right now this right is called the intellectual property rights these rights are exclusive rights it means nobody else can use without the permission of the owner of the property now why is the government giving this rights to the owner because they are rewarding the intellectual creativity of this owner or the inventor so once the owner gets the right what can he do he can commercially exploit it he can sell it okay but subjected to national laws international agreements etc also the rights can be assigned he can give it to somebody and say i cannot do all this you know business deals and making it in the you know industrially to make it make a lot i cannot do all this so he can either sell or he can say that you will be doing it i don't want to do it i will go back to my lab so he can sell it or assign it for financial benefit he can take the money go back to his lab and invent more or he can manufacture and sell so in intellectual property you have two major classes 
one is called the registered rights one is called the unregistered rights registered rights means you have to come to the government and file them then you have to register them so among this category you have patents trademarks registered designs and geographical indications we'll see each one of them a little later and you have unregistered rights which means as soon as they create it as soon as you create it it is registered not registered i mean it is yours okay it is your right like say for example leonardo da vinci he created so many inventions those are not registered or something but it's his so when whenever you say mona lisa you know who has painted it okay something like that so unregistered rights are like copyrights confidential information passing off unregistered design rights now all these things are not registered and they are it can be just like that if you want you can register them if you don't want you know you don't need to if you register you can actually stop infringers infringers means people who try to use it without your permission if you do not register it you cannot prove at what time you created you know how many years it was there with you okay that is why it is important to register them so let's go to the next now we are going to see each one of the intellectual property rights so the first one and i would say one of the most important ones is patents now what is a patent patent is for a constructional feature say for example see this picture this is actually a table so the constructional features of this table is better than the other tables so how can you increase it can you decrease it do you prefer it it has additional features now for all this the functionality and the total overall product you are getting a patent now it is for a product with new features now patents are granted between or a contract between the inventor and the government okay this is a territorial right which means if you get a patent in india it is valid only in india not in us if you get a patent in us it is only valid in us not in india that is why people come to other countries to file patents and it is having a limited period of time validity like say when you get a phone recharged it is for one month three months something like that so a patent's validity is 20 years not one day more not one day less this is basically for inventions okay now the invention can be a product say for example a apple phone it can be a process the process of making you know sandwich or bread it can be an apparatus something like this table okay or your bike something like that so what is the necessity for this what are the requirements it has to be novel okay it has to be new and in return what does the inventor give he gives a full disclosure he tells you how he has made it what all this table can do okay and how he has constructed it why should he give this disclosure because after 20 years any person who is interested can reproduce it make it use it okay without his permission but during this 20 years of its life span of this patent nobody can make it without his permission or sell it until they get rights from him so he has to give the full disclosure the terms of the patent are specific to countries okay there are some flexibilities for some countries there are no flexibilities in some countries depending on the economic status of the country otherwise it is almost the same among all and the protection how much protection can you get it is defined by the language of the claim in which you have given to the patent office so it is a bit costly but not very expensive especially for institutions and all that except private players and you can define it by its claims we'll see what is the claim later it is expensive and it is it is not very expensive for institutions and all that 
but it takes a little time, at least a year, to fully get it. It's not very easy to get until you prove that it is novel, inventive, and all those, and it is expensive to enforce. Okay, so let's go to the second one that is registered designs. A design, as soon as you create it itself, you will get design rights. But if you want it to be protected, you have to register it. Okay, so now let's see what is a design. As the name goes, design is for something you apply on an article or the physical appeal of the article. Like say for example, among your own classmates, you will see everybody has a mobile and each mobile, overall it looks the same, but everything is different. Okay, every mobile is different. The same goes with going on the road. When you go on the road, you see numerous bikes. All of them have typically two wheels and a body. But then the shape of each and every bike Okay, it's a little different. Okay, the same thing goes about with your dresses. Okay, it's all the same hands and legs, and you know, hands and um, you know, the body, uh, it's going to be the same, but then some has collars and some don't have collars, and you will have buttons and all that. But then overall, the features are different the designs, the shape, it's all this different. That's how you can identify one from the other. So that means that is the shape which is given. Okay. Now that is called the design. For designs, the features it has to be appealing to the eye. But that is not like a mandatory requirement. Some of them has more application, so you prefer to use. The requirement for the design is it has to be new. Okay. And if you have first made it and then it has come to the market and it's not yet one year, you still have one year time. Once it's in the market or you, it is out in the open, you still have one year, you can register it. And once you register it in the um, intellectual property office, you will get a registered design number. So whenever you buy a mobile or a bike, you will, you will get a pamphlet now. You can always check, there will be a registered design number. You can also protect computer graphical items and you know, um, the shape of uh, mobile or you know, your sandals to your plates to everything can be um, design can be protected. So design you can apply for any industrial or handicraft item. The only thing is it has to be new and it has to have an individual character that means it has to be new. When you apply you will get a five year monopoly okay five years after that you can review it to 15 to 25 years. After that, it will lapse. So industrial designs is categorized based upon classes. So if you have, say for example, watch, it is a different category. So you have all watches which fall into that category. So we, we have classification. So they all fall under that category. So when you apply for a new design, you have like say for example, a plate or a sandal or a perfume bottle, you have to specifically see which category it falls because the search is done in that particular category so you can have design classes for watches for plates you know for decorative items for electronic rooms for containers for sandals and for computers for uh, mobile phones so many things the third intellectual property is trademarks i think everybody must have oh ma'am <laughs> Hello? Continue, ma'am. Okay. So the third category is trademarks. So trademarks is for any word, name, logo, symbol, or device, which will help you identify the merchant from the others, okay, and their products. Say, for example, um, each one of you have a mobile phone. So if I ask you, do you want a Samsung phone? or a Nokia phone or an Apple phone, okay? If I'm going to give you a gift and I ask you three possibilities, I have a Samsung, a Nokia and an Apple. Which one will you prefer? I want an answer. iPhone. Exactly. Apple. iPhone, ma'am. Exactly, exactly. So how do you identify that? That is because of the brand name. Brand. iPhone, okay? iPhone is Apple and you know that Apple products are better 
better than Samsung and um, Nokia. Okay, so that identification is the brand name. So it is not only prestige, quality, it is also the cost, right? So you know that that brand is better, the product is costlier, the um, features are improved, okay? So all these things are associated and it's a very good brand. It's, if you buy, it will be there for another five years, seven years without any problems. So you understand the brand with that, uh, with the product, okay? You're associating. So that is a trademark. Now trademarks are very expensive. So if you say uh, Apple is going to sell the name, you know, it will there will be such a lot of bidding because that brand name is so big. It will go to crores and billions and you know millions of dollars. So what is the essential features for trademarks? It has to be distinctive. Acquiring trademarks. So how do you get the trademark? You can get it by use, but like you started using okay like say for example um you started up as a small shop okay a hotel uh, i think in chennai we have lots of hotels you have um, say for example give me one name one hotel which is uh, which has oh, okay saravana saravana bhavan right saravana bhavan is a uh, hotel name they started small and they went big okay so they have so many so many um shops in different locations and they have gone i think uh, even to other countries right so they started small okay they became famous so by use so the first acquiring trademarks is by use they started small then they found that they are good and people are coming and people are asking them to have more shops and so they slowly diversified so then after their use okay they have registered so once you can use you can establish and then you can register or you can first register register means you come to the intellectual property office and you register the name then you open a shop so that is by registration so you can have it by use or you can have it by registration okay and the protection the protection it depends upon how distinct it is okay the cost is it's moderate it's not as expensive it's quite moderate but the period of um, validity is indefinite you have to keep renewing it and it just goes on just like your mobile you keep paying money and it's automatically your mobile number continues and continues and continues okay shall we go to the next yes no yes ma'am okay. yes ma'am Okay. Yes, ma'am. Trademarks. You can apply this mark before you use. Okay. But after you know that it is, you know, good enough, now you're making money, you have to immediately register because people can steal that name and try to use it. Okay. So once you register it, you can have it for different classification of goods. You can see, for example, I think you have the Tata, Tata brand, Indian Tata brand. Can you tell me for what all you have um, products in Tata from Tata? Tata cars, ma'am. Excellent. Then Tata homes, air conditioners. Yes. Then jewelry. Excellent. Can you tell me the name? Tanish. Excellent. Okay. So, right in. Yes. Tata Tata right in. Yes, yes. See, you have just the name Tata. The brand is Tata. But you can apply for a very a class of goods. It's not only Tata watches. You have Tata vehicles. You have Tanish jewelry, which is again Tata. And you have um, um, Tata home. You know, so many different. From Tata water purifiers to everything you have. Okay. So for different classes of goods, you can apply. The same name. Okay, like Goldbridge. Godrich is there for Almira. You have now Godrich Homes. You have um, blah, blah, blah. So many you have. Okay. So once you register, you can use the symbol R, which means it is registered. So it is a it is a way of showing that this is registered. Don't use mine. Okay. Now registration increases the rights. Okay. Copying is not necessary to infringe. Okay. You'll see this 
just in the next slide. It is easy to obtain, but it has to be distinctive. And it is very expensive to enforce. Litigation is very costly. If somebody tries and cheats you and tries to copy your name, you have to go to the court. Going to the court means uh, it's a little lengthy. You have to pay the lawyer, you have to, and it goes on and on and on. So litigation is expensive unless you are ready to pay. Okay. Now let's see. The next is called service marks. These also comes under trademarks. Why it is called service marks? Because these marks distinguish services. Say for example, the Indian Railway. Indian Railway is giving us service. So it is a service mark. Indian Post, that is a service mark. It's not a trademark, it's a service mark. So you have the insurance, banking, hotels, they have their own brand. Yeah. Service providers. Exactly. Okay. So let's go to the next. So this is one example of how you can have deceptively similar trademarks. See, for example, this. This is the McDonald's. This is a very famous trademark, expensive trademark. You have something very similar. It's called the Munchie Burger. Now, if you are going in the highway, okay, in a car, and you just see this sign from far, children think that it is McDonald's. So this is very, it is very, very difficult to identify and therefore they are deceptive. This mark is deceptive. Similarly, this is Puma. Okay, this is a brand. Similarly, it's Starbucks and Nike. And you see here, this is Coma. Okay, and the sign is almost like the Puma. And this is Nike. It's this is called Nuki. And the sign is little different. But actually, people try to get deceptive. You try to cheat customers because customers wouldn't actually notice this fine details when they buy. So you can actually cheat customers. So these kind of cases go for infringement lawsuits. Okay, let's go to the next one. The next important thing is copyright. Okay. Copyright has a very narrow protection and this is basically expression and not the idea itself. It is how you express. Now copyright, under copyright, what are the things which come under copyright? Under copyright, you can have anything which is two-dimensional or three-dimensional things. Two-dimensional means movies, photos, paintings, 3D means sculptures, okay, all that. When you Registered a copyright, you will get this mark C. Okay, so today when you go, if you have some photos at home or you know, um, if you have some booklets, um, TV or computer or mobile booklet, please go open and see whether you have the C symbol. Any book pamphlets, they will have this. If you have novels, story books, please go and check. They will have this C sign. This is an expensive. It's cost is less to register, but the life term is very, the validity time now is very long. The term is 50 years from the death of the author. And it is automatically created. The moment you finish writing a novel, it is yours. The copyright is quickly created. But if you register, you get better protection. It is easy to obtain, there's not much required, but it is expensive to enforce and litigation is costly. So let me see some examples for you. This is the most famous Mona Lisa. So these are all exactly or you know, little similar infringement copies. Okay, it's Mona Lisa with the form. Okay, you have little, little differences. Now all these is considered to be infringement of Mona Lisa. See, for example, this particular photo of this man, okay? This is actually a very famous photograph. And now they are trying to make a pop album with similar photograph. Now, this is infringement. Similarly, this is um, the, um, what do you say, the icon on uh, pillowcases. Now, this is a copied one. It's not so exactly the shape, same shape. It's much lighter, but still it's the same. 
So you are actually trying to hoodwink the customer. Okay. So these are all copyright infringible articles. Let's go to the next one. This is geographical indications. So geographical indications are things which are specific for different places or you know special from some places. Like this is around the world. Some specific products catch your eye. When you go to Switzerland, you want to eat cheese. When you want to go to Hungary, you want different things. When you go to Germany, you want beer. Okay, so every country has its own famous items. So let's see what is geographical indications. Now, these are indications which are which identify goods or as originating from a particular territory wherein you have a specific quality, a reputation, characteristics. Like for example, Kanchi Puram silk. So this place. Kanjipuram is famous for its beautiful silk sarees with their temple borders, okay? And the quality of silk, their traditional uh, method of weaving, the color combinations, it's, it's a very uh, classic feel, you know? Any South Indian wedding without a Kanjipuram sari, it is in, impractical to even, you know? So we associate, you have to get it from that place. The same thing about Darjeeling tea. You want some fresh, nice tea, you think about Darjeeling tea. So, the objective here is that the customer should not be misled. So, when you buy a product, if somebody says this is Kanjipuram Sari, okay, when you buy it, you believe that it is Kanjipuram Sari and you are ready to pay the cost, no matter how much. But if somebody tries to sell you an expensive Sari and give you something less, okay, they try to mislead you and give you something of low quality, then you are very annoyed. So that is why the government have seen that the customer should not be misled. So the marking must not be misled and there should be absolutely no dilution. And the people from that particular zone from which it is associated or arising, they have to get the economic prosperity. So what are they doing? So the government says, you can form a cooperative. Now, for example, since we have Kanji Puram as the best example, so all the weavers, okay, they have decided upon to form a cooperative and they actually make rules that, you know, they will use this much silk, okay, this kind of a weaving technique and, you know, they will have the um, benchmark of how it has to be done. And they will attach a silk mark. I think now recently they have got the, I think few years ago they have got the um, geographical indications, okay, for Kanjipuram silk. So when you buy it, you will get the silk mark. When you buy a sari, if you see, you will always get a silk card, okay, silk mark card. That means it is authentic from Kanjipuram. So if you don't have that, they say that it is not. So now people search for it. Do you have it? Show me. Then only I will buy. So you will. So the thing is, nobody can try to mislead you. Similarly, like basmati rice, you have so many different varieties of rice, long grain, without this specific smell. So now you have the basmati mark. Okay, geographical indication. So other countries cannot try to use it. Like for example, Pakistan. Pakistan was trying to sell basmati rice. So there was a very big, um, you know, um, diplomatic problem and. After that, we have got the Basmati mark. So similarly, here we have the Darjeeling tea, Basmati rice, Kolapur chapel, Nagpur orange, and there are lots, lots of, and I think Tamil Nadu, we have a lot of geographical indications registered in the past one year. Let's go to the next one. This is the Plant Varieties and Farmers' Right Act, or the, in India, we don't give patents for plant varieties, new plant varieties. So for that, we have another act, which is for protection of new plant varieties. Now this new plant variety act gives protection to both the farmer and the breeder, okay? So Indian PVP act is one of the most important and novel one, okay? This establishes a system for effective protection of new plant varieties, but there is a requirement. It has to be new. The variety, it has to be new, it has to be distinct, it should be uniform. 
and it has to be stable and it also has to have a satisfactory denomination what do you mean by that it means that if you make a new variety a plant variety it has to be new it has to be distinct from the others and it has to be uniform it's not like once you will get a seed which is of this quality and the second time it is showing you some other quality it has to be stable it shouldn't revert back to its parent denomination and it must have uniform denomination but like it must be able to yield new plants okay seed must come sometimes what happens when you breed you will not get the next generation okay seed formation doesn't happen so the plant just goes okay it dies you don't get a next generation so see for example here we have different varieties of rice okay all of them are different varieties you have green you have orange you have black you have little brown you know all different different so these are all different rice varieties the same thing with this plant this is a new variety it is giving you more leaf and so more seed this is to encourage new plant variety development so now this is a overall view of all the different ones we have covered till now there's one i have left that is the layout designs for integrated circles so if you are making a design for circles you can also have protection for that and one more we have left is the trade secrets trade secrets come under the trademark that place okay uh, no, no, not in the um, trade secrets come where after patent, when you do not want to disclose, okay, the um, you, and you want to retain it as a secret, it's called the trade secret. See, for example, when you talk about patents, the lifespan of a patent is 20 years, after 20 years, it goes to the public domain. But if you are an inventor and you say, I can take the risk. But I will not disclose my invention. Then you go to trade secrets. So by this, the liability to hold it safely is with the inventor. But you can exploit it nicely. See, one of the best trade secrets is Coca-Cola. Till now, it has been um, so many years. But still, the Coca-Cola formula is still a secret. So how do they go about it? They have agreements okay so the only the person who is um, involved okay there is only one person involved with the CEO and he gets the formula and he mixes it not one staff is aware of what is there in the composition or the formula which is added to the whole blend so this way trade secrets can be kept for a very very long time so now this covers up the intellectual property all the types. So one, we have the patents, you have the trademarks and the service marks, you have the geographical indications, you have industrial designs, you have copyright, you have trademark, trade secrets, integrated designs of integrated circuits, and plant variety protection. Are we clear till now? Shall we go ahead or you want to ask me anything? We can go ahead now. Okay. So now we'll talk about patents. Patents are everything is important, but since I am from the patent office, so I will give you some more information about patents. So I think this we have already done. So let's see what you can do once you get a patent. Okay. Now patents are between inventor and state and territorial. Now we are seeing why should you have a patent? Once you get a patent, you have the right to exclude others from making your invention, using it, selling it or importing it. Okay. If your invention is a product or it's a process in which, in which the invention is incorporated throughout the country, because it is territorial. So if you have a patent in India, you can say nobody else without my permission in India can use it sell it or make it for how long 20 years from the day you file but you have to pay maintenance fee as is required by law so you can have a single invention say for example you have invented a new mobile phone a single invention or you can have a group of inventions 
okay linked like you can have the product the process by which you have made it and the use or you can have just the process of making it and the apparatus or you can have the product the process and the apparatus say for example you have made a bread okay a, a method of um, the bread is a product the process by which you made the bread when you added the wheat you added the yeast and you added warm water you added a little salt okay a little sugar now that is the process okay how you mixed it and kept it in the oven okay and you have kept it at a specific temperature that and for how much time that is the process the apparatus is if you are making it in say for example you are a small um, what do you say a small and medium sized enterprise you have made it totally automated apparatus by which from mixing to keeping uh, to autoclaving it okay to baking it everything is automized so you can have the entire apparatus okay provided it's new novel inventive and applicable okay so you can have this kind of a uh, unity in the invention now why should you file a patent why should you actually apply for a patent this is to encourage inventors and you will get a protection for disclosing your invention it benefits both the public and the inventor why the public is getting better products and the inventor is getting he is making money for his invention the working of the patent and invention commercially when you make it in a commercial scale within reasonable and practicable time will get you better products okay so that is the main thing let's say for example you have mobile phones today you have a model within a week or within two or three days you have new models now why are there so many models coming from the, from the same manufacturer because they are improvising they are adding a new feature they are changing the you know the shape or the viewpoint or say they are enhancing the camera or the um, capacity okay the size of um, what you can store the space is increasing the video quality or the calling quality or you know 4g 5g so many it is improving so there are so many improvements it's not like once you buy it it's going to be with you for 10 years you are always going to get an improved product so when you get when you file patents and people are keeping on buying okay the inventor is not going to sit down and say i have finished he is going on improving it and that is why you are always getting better and better and better products at a reasonable and practicable time it's not that now we have a invention you have a model now the next 10 years forget about it it's not like that you're going to get a better product again so the advantages of patent when you file a patent what happens a new uh, inventor when he comes he is he is going to definitely go through what is already there in the market so he can say okay i want to do this oh but this is already there it is been done so let me leave this let me try to improve it so you can avoid the duplication of research and you will know what is the latest okay in every field of technology whichever you are interested in so the industry will always give you improved existing improved products from the existing technology and since you're making it in a industrial level it's going to be cheaper and a better product and it is actually an indicator of an achievement say for example if your college is going to get a um, um, ugc certification they are going to ask you how many patents you file how many projects you have how many papers you have that was earlier now they are asking how many patents you have how many granted patents you have so it is an indicator so before they used to say i have 10 papers now they say i have two or three patents and it is also a record for information which can be used for future reference now who can file the patent you can apply it alone if you are the inventor or if two or three people have joined and made it you can file it together and you can be the true and the first inventor the person who makes it will be the true and first inventor say for example you are all students in the college now you are 
using the college you are using the chemicals the um, professors from your college you are using the literature from your library and you make an invention so you will be the inventor but the college you are doing the invention in the college because you are provided with the chemicals the lab facilities and the teachers from the college so the college will be the applicant okay so they will be filing but you will be the inventor and and you can be the, or you can assign your invention to the college if you say i cannot do it more i have finished it i have finished my project i am going off so you can assign it also to your college something like that or you can say i can't do all this and you can ask your legal representative you can give your invention to the lawyers and they will take care of it and you can go back to your lab okay what can you patent so in the patent what are the things you can patent you can patent a product say for example a mobile phone you can patent the process or the method by which you have made it you can have method of treatment if you think you have made you have invented a um, method of diagnostics or a method of treatment a method of removing you know cancer some a technique you can file it as a method of treatment but in india method of treatment and use of anything is not allowed so we allow any products process or methods and compositions you can have compositions say for example you are making a um say for example um what can i give you for an example composition say for example um complan complan is actually having a mixture of a lot of ingredients say for example malt sugar um vitamin x and you know milk powder it's a composition it's having so many ingredients together okay so you can have something like that it's a composition say for example hair oil um give me one hair oil which is um, um helps improve um hair growth give me one example anybody indulekha excellent indulekha is um, coconut oil with a lot of additions like say for example hibiscus um amla and shikakai that is a composition okay so we will talk about indulekha little later so this is okay with you product process composition in india otherwise product process method method of treatment composition and use use of it okay shall we go to the next slide yes ma'am yes okay. so we are going to talk about um, biological inventions also this is a little different so i have one slide for that sir if i am taking more time you have to tell me i have another more half an hour more than sir yes ma'am yes ma'am you can continue till the time okay maybe some questions will be taken up at the end of the session okay if i am running out of time please tell me yes sir yeah so by technological invention i am talking about inventions where you have biological material so if you have a invention wherein biological material is there then it's called a biotechnological invention so the product can has a uh, product can have the biological material or the process may be using it or producing it or processing it so which is the ones which are called biotechnological inventions say for example your invention is a plant or a micro micro means micro organism a peptide peptide means a protein okay or a nucleic acid or a composition which has let's say example like neem jamun turmeric you must be i think uh, in college you must be doing small small projects you know like neem using neem for you know wound healing and all that you must be doing so if your invention uses any biological material plant based leaf okay soil based or some extracts from bacteria or water you isolated something from um, petrol okay or from waste waste water something like that all of them come under biotechnological inventions okay now for for getting a patent there are three important requirements one is it has to be new it has to be new or novel 
it must be inventive it must have a technical advancement in what it is done and third it must be industrially applicable matlab you must be able to do it in a industrial level and the next is the law of the land we will see that also so if you if a patent has to be granted it has to satisfy these requirements one it has to be new it has to be inventive that means there must be a technical advancement and third you must be able to produce it industrially why industrially if you want to do manually each and every product is going to be different say for example you are making a hand handmade um sandal okay you have handmade leather sandals from switzerland no? it's very expensive now each one is custom made you are not going to get again exactly the same next time why because it is handmade there will be small differences so it is called custom made okay it's never going to be identical but if you are buying uh, say for example samsung mobile all the mobiles are the same or say for example a pen um the renaults uh, or you know um any pen all of them are industrially made say for example your mouse computer for mouse all of them are exactly same if you go on buy a particular brand a particular model everything is identical there's no difference okay so it has to be industrially producible it's not like you can't say that this worked because i made it tomorrow it's not working that is not valid for a patent for patent it has to be industrially producible and next is the law of the land we'll see that a little later okay now if you have biological material in addition to written disclosure you have to disclose the source from where you have taken that biological material say for example you isolated a bacteria from water in the from your um, college okay near your college you had some waste water plant from there you took little water from there you isolated a bacteria okay or you isolated some chemical some extract you have taken out from that or you took some soil from your college campus and you found that there is something which is there by which you know skin healing is happening now from where did you take that soil sample you have to disclose the source so you will say from this college avadi okay chennai india you have taken the soil so you will have to tell us the source the geographical origin i mean to say you identified a bacteria you are saying the source it is from mud from sand okay from water geographical origin india chennai avadi did you understand that source geographical origin both you have to give and if the source is india then you have to get nba permission i'll tell you what is nba permission if the source is india india okay okay if the source and geographical origin is india you need to get nba permission if it is not india you only have to tell us the source and origin if you say it is us it's fine for us but if you say india get nba permission and if there is a bacteria okay you isolated a bacteria you isolated a sequence if it is a bacteria or a virus or a fungi you have to deposit the biological material if you made a mutated strain okay natural strain it is better to deposit but if you have mutated it okay you have added some chemicals by which it is mutated or you exposed it to uv radiation you mutated okay you have to deposit it and it is showing you very good activity now if you want that you have to deposit it because that activity may not be available in normal strains okay so the genetic resource it can be plants it can be micro it can be animal based material it can be dna rna peptide protein or plasmids so in addition to normal disclosure you have to give the origin source okay and if it is india nba permission now what is nba it is the national biodiversity authority okay now what is nba do it has or it deals with all the matters which are related to biological resources access to biological resources by foreign individuals institutions or companies nba wants to know if you are actually accessing biological resource 
and if you are having any link to foreign are you doing the um, work here and then transferring the material to foreign are you doing it for somebody else are you actually doing the work the such work here and transferring all the data to foreigners so that they will patent it and you will get nothing or so they want to know that okay and if you are filing for a patent whether you're from india or you're from abroad you have to get nba permission if it is ipr ipr means if you're filing for patents or geographical indications whatever it is intellectual property in india you have to get nba approval okay this is the form it is available in their website now why should you deposit biological material say for example in your um, college you found some bacterial strain from wastewater or something you have to deposit it why to deposit because it helps disclosure if you just say it is a bacteria okay you are, you isolated it from soil and it it can degrade you know or it can help wound healing that is not enough disclosure so if you say that yes it has this 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 gene bacterium it's actually a very big um, what do you say it is very difficult to totally you know sequence it and prepare it so if you deposit it what happens deposition is almost like how you have a bank okay in the bank you can store it similarly you have deposit depositories international depositories now what they do is you will give them a active bacterium and they will start growing okay you have to provide them a culture a viable culture viable means alive culture they will and you have to pay them they will give you a deposit certificate and what is their job they will keep it viable okay they will link it to this particular application and they will keep it so anybody who's interested can apply there and they will inform you sometimes if you request that information or anybody even after the um, 20 years of your patent application they can always procure it from there and try to produce that chemical by which they can have wound healing okay they don't need to come to you they don't need to ask you a favor and say can you please give me that okay that is why it is important to deposit so that anyone who is interested can get it but within the 20 years it is with your permission after that without your permission anybody can access it okay so what can you deposit self-replicating biological material genetically modified organisms bacteria cells all that so there are 47 depositories so i'm going to move fast so let's go to section three. These are the non-patentable things according to Indian. Since we are talking about um, um, college in India, I'm going to give you things which are not patentable in India. So first I'm, I'm going to deal with biological inventions and then we'll go for the general um, sections which are not allowed for India. Section three is important. These are the sections which don't allow things which, are, which can be patented in India. So you can't get patents for anything where commercial exploitation is contrary to morality. So examples are like cloning humans, modifying the germline identity of humans, or using human embryos for industrial purpose. Anything which is against morality, we don't allow. Say for example, killing sheep. You have an invention which helps kill all the animals. Now that is against morality. So you cannot allow inventions like that under section 3B. Uh, similarly, serious prejudice to health, to human health, to animal, to plant life, or to the environment. Say, for example, tomorrow you come with an invention by which you are making a kind of a gas by which people are getting hallucinated. Hallucination means uh, like going mad, you know, something like that. So, these kind of inventions we don't allow under Section 3B. It can, or say, for example, it can cause serious prejudice to health. We don't allow some things like that, like adulteration techniques, destruction of mass destruction instruments, like atom bomb. If you come with an invention for a bomb, it's not allowed. Okay. Next is section 3C. If you discover anything, living thing or a non living thing, for example, say, for example, near your college, you have isolated a bacterium from soil, from water, it is a mere isolation from natural environment so that is not patentable but if you can mutate it and make it better than the natural one then it is patentable but if you're just isolating and giving me it is not patentable so it can be even a protein it can be even a sequence it can be just a peptide from your blood 
if you purify and give, it is not patentable unless you modify and the modification is better than the normal one. So I think this is not heated for you. Let's go to the next. Uh, this is section 3D. This is one of the most important sections for India because India is the uh, first one to initiate this and many countries are trying to follow suit here. So see, a patent is valid for 20 years. Say for example, aspirin. Aspirin is used for um, headache, you know, pain. It is an anti-inflammatory drug. Now, they are still working on aspirin and they found that, then they find out that it can be used for cardiovascular disease. That means heart attacks. You can stop heart attacks with aspirin. So you can again file, say, for a new use. Aspirin for cardiovascular drug or to prevent uh, heart attack. So that is 20 years for um, in anti-inflammatory function and again 20 years for cardiovascular function. Okay, same drug, two different uses. So this is called evergreening. So you first have a patent for aspirin. As yes. You have anti-inflammatory role. So almost at the end of the 20 years, you file another patent and say, again, aspirin for cardiovascular or for heart attack. So this is not allowed. So it is called, this procedure is called evergreening. So you will keep on extending and going. Okay, 20 years for one. Again, you extend it for another 20 years. Again, you go on for another 20 years. So this is not allowed in India. So a new form of a known substance, say for example, turmeric. Turmeric turmeric composition you are using it for one purpose again you say i'm going to make it into a more fine powder and that is giving you more activity next i will make it more nano form and it's giving me more activity i'm making it into a um, cream form and that is giving better activity we are not allowing any forms so new form of a known substance is not allowed or a new property or a new use or a mere new use of a known process or machine or a parameters is not allowed unless you can show some Efficacy. We were talking about Indulekha. This is for section 3E. A substance which is obtained by mere admixture. So you're mixing all these things and you say that it is new. It is novel and inventive. But when you mix, say for example, Indulekha. So you know Brahmi, Shikakai, Aloe Vera, Brinj, Methi, Hibiscus, Amla, Neem, they're all helpful for hair hair fall, you know, it stimulates hair and all that. But when you add all of them together with coconut oil, it is obviously going to give you a synergistic effect. Okay, they are going to be a better effect. So this is called admixture. When you mix everything, everything is going to give you better activity than plain coconut oil. So we say in section 3E, you have to show an additional effect. It's not one plus one plus one effect. It should be one plus one should give you four five effect. Then that is an additional effect. It should be a synergistic effect. Synergistic effect. Say for example, you know that Brahmi and Shikakai gives you hair growth. Okay, they can only give you hair growth. They have no action against dandruff. But when you combine them together, they have a new effect, which is a anti-dandruff effect. Now that is a synergistic effect. But Brahmi is giving hair growth, Shikaka is also giving you hair growth, and you are adding both and saying that see, instead of one centimeter, it is two centimeter. So that is just additive effect. That is not going to help you come out of section 3E. It has to have that additional effect, the anti dandruff effect. Did you understand this? Yes, no? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The next is section 3H. Uh, this is method of uh, agriculture or horticulture. It is not allowed. You cannot get patents for method of agriculture, like, you know, um, digging the soil and putting crops. And then, you know, uh, you have the crop rotation. If uh, you are in the farmers, you have seen uh, in the villages, you will be knowing that people cross, they improve soil by placing legumes in between normal cropping cycles and then they burn the soil. They burn the crop, you know, and it actually nourishes the soil. Now, these are all age-old techniques. 
of agriculture you can't file patents for these okay shall we go to the next one section 3i so any process for medicinal surgical curative prophylactic diagnostic or therapeutic method of treatment of humans or animals is not patentable in india why because india is still a developing country and if we don't even allow if we even start uh, giving patents for methods of treatment you know then there will be no health access so method of treatment is not allowed in india and in many developing countries and underdeveloped countries too okay so in the next is section 3j plants and animals in whole or part is not patentable like seeds leaves you know stem any part of a cell of a plant or an animal is not patentable in india but we have plant variety protection we dealt with it okay in the ip you have plant varieties new plant varieties but not plants as such okay now we are coming to section 3k section 3k is mathematical methods business methods algorithms computer programs per se it is not patentable in india in biology we have a lot of bioinformatics where software programming for drug sequence drug designing there are lots of patents coming we do not allow that 3n 3n is presentation of information you don't get um, for presentation of information if you buy inguleka or uh, any of these um, eye drops or uh, inhalers you will get a pamphlet or when you buy tv or mobile you get pamphlets now that pamphlet shows you the the booklet gives you a lot of details now these details is actually in the form of a pamphlet and that is presentation of information you don't get patents for presentation of information for so what what can you get from uh, what kind of ip protection can you get for this kind of presentation of information can you tell me anyone copyright with copyright you can get with all these things protected okay the next is section 3p this is traditional knowledge um, india is rich with traditional knowledge so a lot of countries are going about it traditional knowledge in any form is not patentable okay then we are coming to the ones which are not basically related to biology other inventions frivolous inventions you know like uh, say for example you feel it's not really relevant or you know against natural laws those are not allowed mere arrangement and rearrangement or duplication of devices that is not patentable a literary dramatic musical artistic work aesthetic work cinematography television works they are not patentable you will get copyright protection for these works a mere scheme a rule or or a method of playing games mental acts these are also not okay topography layout of integrated circuits you don't get patents but you have the integrated circuit act we talked about it a little before that is there and uh, this is another important thing it, it comes under the non patentable section section 4 if there is any invention which is relating to atomic energy it's not patentable unless you get uh, clearance from the department of atomic energy so inventions which relate relate to uranium beryllium thorium plutonium radium graphite these are all notified by central government and those applications go to atomic energy board the part of atomic energy so only when you get clearance from them these are these come to be Otherwise, it's not patentable subject matter. Any inventions which are related to defense, say for example, bioterrorism or you know, pistol and um, all that kind of rifles. Uh, can you mute? I think somebody is in unmute. So inventions which are related to defense are again not patentable. It is again referred to the central government and the department DRDO. They take over these. and secrecy is prevail until the government decides whether they can take in the invention so if you are an inventor what should you do 
So the first thing you do is you should not publish it anywhere before you file the patent application. So you can file the application, check for technical viability or the commercial viability. Then once you completely develop it, find request for examination and get the patent. Once you get a patent, you have to commercialize. The main point of filing a patent is to commercialize. You have to make money. If you don't make money out of it, then there's no use of filing a patent. And after you get the patent, commercialize also, you have to watch if somebody is infringing your patent. You don't have to, you have to stop them. That's why you, because it's a registered right, you can always sue them in court. Okay? With that, I stop. So, if there's anything, I can take it. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, very detailed, informative presentation. Uh, may I request uh, the participants uh, post the questions? If they have any questions, they can raise it to the expert. The expert is available to take up the few questions. If they have any questions, they can raise it to the expert. I think uh, Mr. Vinod. Yes, Mr. Vinod. What is the purpose of trademarks? Uh, trademarks. Trademarks, it helps identify, right? Say, for example, the Sony mobile. Why do you buy a Sony mobile? You identify Sony with a brand, right? You know that Sony mobiles are good for you know the um, the picture quality, the camera, the sound. So when you want to buy a mobile with a specific features, you go for a specific mobile, right? Like a brand, a particular brand. You want this particular brand. You identify the brand, so the brand value is there. That is why you need trademark. If you don't have a trademark, then you won't know which brand you want to buy. Which features you want so every brand is associated with its brand value and brand value is very big say for example you're going to a hotel you will go to any hotel you prefer to go to if it is a vegetarian hotel in chennai you will go to sarana bhavan if you want to go to a non-veg hotel you will go to uh, i don't know um say something like that if you want to buy gold jewelry you will go to tanish isn't it? You won't go to any, so you know the brand value, you know that this is a reasonable, it's, you know, good quality and all that, something like that. That's why you need trademark. It gives you the value for the brand. Yes, I think Mr. Vinod, he raised his hand. I don't know what he... You know, if you have any query, you can download it or make an ask. Okay. So, any other query? The participants, if you have any query, you can uh, ask the expert. Madam is available to take a few questions. How biotechnological properties is used? Biotechnological properties. Uh, I didn't get your question. You mean to say biotechnological inventions? Is it inventions? Yes, yeah. Uh, see, biotechnological inventions, say, you must have heard about, um, um, say, for example, say, for example, cancer. Okay, you have, um, wait, let me, what is your background? Okay, uh, I will just tell you uh, something simple. Uh, you have seen Yakult, um, Yakult, that milk, milk, um, okay, say for example, curd, you can buy it from the shops, right? Curd, you have seen your mother make curd at home, right? Yes. So that curd, when you keep it for one day in this Chennai climate, it's really, really um, sour, right? But
but you see the um, different curd curd um, samples like Hatson and Avin and uh, there are so many brands, so many of them. You see all of them, they don't become so sour. Why? Because because these organ the bacteria which is there now, they have stabilized the bacteria. Due to which what happens is the bacteria does not become that does not allow the curd to become sour. It is much more stable. Okay, when you store it in room temperature also, compared to the age-old curd methods which normally our mothers use at home. Okay, thoda curd hai in one bowl, mummy will add little remaining milk in that. And next day the same is used. But so you consume it and we normally say it is very sour. Okay, but biotechnology helps us to improve the biological organism, that is the microbes. Okay, in the curd, they have identified the organisms, allow them, they make the more stable. Okay, and they will even under normal conditions, these bacteria retain the ability not to become sour and you can use them. Okay, similarly, uh, I think you have aerial, you know, we use a um, lot of detergents to wash clothes, right? So, you um, can you give me an example of um, one or two better detergents? Tell me, aerial. Surfex L. Surfex L, yes. Aerial. You have in Aerial itself two, three different varieties of Aerial. Why is it different? Tell me. In Surfex Chemical L, composition will be. Chemical composition. Chemical composition, yes. But in the chemical composition, you have peptides, you have enzymes. Now, these enzymes help to break down um, protein stains, sweat stains. They can remove all these stains. How oil stains it can degrade. How they are actually taking bacteria, extracting their enzymes, making these enzymes better degraders. So what happens is they can degrade or, or remove stains much better. If you remember the surf we used 10 years ago and the surf we use now, there is so much of difference because there are degraders, enzymes which have been added. Okay, so you have same in aerial itself you have five to six different varieties of aerial they say this is more clean that is uh, that will remove these strains this will not give you the bully feel and this will remove um, uh, what do you say is any kind of stains sweat stains are removed from there this will remove um, even you know hard stains all that is coming from there any kind of strains can be removed that is because of all the enzymes different enzymes enzyme is coming from where from bacteria so you are mutating you are making them more stable, picking them out and doing. Similarly, you have toothpaste. In toothpaste, you have so many different varieties of toothpaste now. Can you give me one best toothpaste now? Not the best. Colgate. Colgate. Colgate may you have uh, charcoal, you have um, salt, you have so many, you know, bleachers, you have enzymes even there, bacterial based enzymes, which will remove the tartar from your teeth. So your teeth will be more white because these enzymes are breaking down that stains which is on the teeth. So you have biotechnology is a very big thing. We don't know only where it is. It is born from here to there. <laughs> drugs. In drugs also there is a lot of research being done using biotech. I can talk a lot. I am a biotechnologist. So. If patent can, can cancel for product, even thought I it is I don't understand. Is patent can cancel for a product means what? What are you trying to ask? Oh, wait, you are saying if a patent is cancelled for a product, even though it is a successful product, yes. If a patent is um, see, if a patent patent has to be novel, inventive, and industrially applicable, three things. You think it is not novel. Or not inventive, it is cancelled. Okay, and if it is coming under section three, you think uh, you have made a product. Say for example, um, say for example, um, say for example, ha, is, um, you think you have not paid the fees. Okay, even after you have bought a patent, you 
cannot take this spot on here. So automatically it is cancelled. Okay? It is something like that. And even if it is um, a normal product, okay, but it was not promised under section 3. Yes, under section 3, you think you are making a very good hair oil, but it is not uh, not allowed under section 3E. Or you think it's pure uh, pure product, okay? Even then, say for example, it's coming under 3J. It's a extract of um, say, okay, um, goat milk is very good. From goat milk, you have extracted a protein. Now that protein is used. That protein is made into a powder. It's pure powder. You can use it for your face. It it will remove all wrinkles. Can you get a patent for that? The product is successful. Everybody will buy it for you. All in your college, everybody is ready. Okay, to buy it. All the girls, say for example. But can you get a patent for that? You can't get a patent. If someone is photocopying a book written by any author, does it amount to infringement of copyright act? Yes, photocopying is yes. it is you're not supposed to. Isn't it the reason why? Like say for example movies, movies also, you go to the movie theater and you watch and you take a copy of it in your camera or your mobile and you come out and you upload it, that is copyright infringing. No? Even book, Harry Potter book, you take it and you um, photocopy it and you go to the black market and you sell it, that is also infringing. Yes, it is infringing. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, uh, dear participants, and uh, the recordings of this session will be uploaded in our uh, ESL uh, YouTube channel, and the link will be shared to you later. So you can uh, go through again uh, the session handled by ma'am if you have any query. And as uh, our next session is about to start, uh, I think we can uh, stop here. Uh, still, if you have any query, we can uh, you can say mail it to me. We can get it uh, clarified from Madam later. Thank you very much, ma'am, for a wonderful Thank and informative session. And in spite of your busy schedule, you readily accepted our invitation to deliver the session to our uh, participant on uh, inter intellectual Thank property you. rights. Uh, on behalf of the Murugappa Polytechnic and uh, on behalf of the IAEC, I extend our heartiest thanks to you, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, and uh, dear participants, the feedback link for this session is already posted in the chat box. You can submit your feedback. And the uh, next session is about to start immediately. Please uh, stay uh, online. We will be, uh, we'll be starting the next session immediately. So. The feedback session is already shared in the chat box. So please be online. I will let you know once the next session speaker is arrived. I think Madam is already arrived. Uh,